All right, guys. Um, so we got a limited amount of time. Esther just left. She's gonna be gone for an hour, and I have to take the internet down and change out all of the switching in the house. Let's go. Keiko, come on. Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. My name is Nick Howell. Thank you for joining me here today. And I wanted to talk to you today about switching. We're going to talk about networking here in Data Center Dudes Data Center. Uh, make sure you subscribe because we're on this journey. And if you haven't seen it yet, you're going to want to start at the beginning and see going back all the way to the beginning of the unboxing of my first storage array. But I wanted to take you guys down sort of my path of networking over the last few years and how things have evolved, as well as talk to you about a company that a lot of people have slept on, if I'm being honest. So in the beginning, of Data Center Dudes Data Center, there was Cisco. And for context, going all the way back to the early 2000s, I was pursuing a CCIE. I got through CCNA and I got through CCNP. I was the world's biggest Cisco fanboy. Uh, I worked on the 12,000 series GSRs. I worked on the 10K Sonnet rigs from those times. Uh, and yeah, went through all kinds of gear. 6509s were a regular daily occurrence working with blade chassis and things like that. But anyway, um, as far as the home lab goes, starting in like 2019, I started to build up things around Cisco managed switches, specifically the small business line, the SG300 line of switches. For most folks, for 150 bucks, this is perfect. This is all you need. It's got 12 ports. Well, how many ports is that? Eight ports, but it's also got two additional plus two and plus two SFP ports, not SFP plus. So you can put a one gig SFP in there if you want to make it a full what would that be, 12 port switch? You could certainly do that for uplink and anything like that. I ended up getting a second one of those because the SG300 ended up going out and they came out with the SG350, pretty much the same switch. But then things started to get a little bigger and I needed more room and I needed more space. So short of running a jet engine like a 3960 or something like that, a 48 port gigabit switch, uh, I just decided to start looking at alternatives. And in between that time frame was when I started to introduce 10 gig into my network. Now, Cisco didn't have anything that was what I would call cost effective, but I stumbled across this little company uh, from another reviewer here on YouTube uh, called Microtik. And they had this little desktop fanless managed five port 10 gig switch. And it supported lag and it supported, you know, 8023 AD, all that stuff, right? So I needed something that could I could take my PC and hook it up to a Synology over 10 gig. And that's really the only two things that needed 10 gig interfaces, just so that I could move data back and forth between that. That eventually expanded. Uh, so I, after I got, and I've gotten rid of that five port since then, so forgive me. I then went up to the eight port, uh, and let's we'll put the model numbers here on screen. I'm not gonna try and like, oh, I do have them right here. Uh, CRS309-1G-8S plus IN. Like it's, their model numbers are insane. We'll put them here on screen and I'll put them in the description below so you guys can see them. This is an eight port, right? It's got an ethernet port uplink, RJ45 uplink, but it's got eight SFP plus cages that you can put uh, RJ45 fiber, whatever you want to, fully managed 10 gig switch with a console on the front, right? Rack mount ears if you want, completely fanless. Guys, look at that. It's just a giant heat sink on the back. There's no fans in this one. And it can be had for about $150. Just mind blowing that you can bring 10 gigabit ethernet into the house uh, for that low of a cost value, right? I then went up and got the next one up above that. And it's currently what my production is using right now. You can barely see it in here, uh, but we'll throw the model number on the screen and I'll put a link to it in the description for you guys. This is the uh, 16 port version of this switch. Uh, it does have a couple of little fans in the back, but it also has dual power supplies uh, and it has been a fantastic switch. It's the CRS uh, 317 line, dash 1G dash 16 S plus, right? Model numbers. So that has been fantastic because not only do I need my PC on 10 gig and the Synology on 10 gig, uh, I also have some storage arrays here that need cluster interconnect over 10 gig and they need host access over 10 gig, right? So I've, I've definitely upped my need for 10 gig in the house, and but that's about the extent of it, right? Between my PC, the Synology stuff, the arrays and stuff that's in the racks in general, that's gonna be the extent of it. So over the course of time, I've now gotten everything down to 10 gig on one switch, and I've got a second one sitting here that we're gonna put in the other rack as well, so we can start to create a top of rack stack in each of the cabinets. Well, I thought, hmm, 
This old Netgear, this GS724T that I've got in the top of the rack, that's kind of old. And shout out to Drew for, for donating that to, uh, to Data Center Dudes Data Center here when I, I was still living on these eight port uh, Cisco switches. Drew hooked me up with a 24 port Netgear switch that he had laying around uh, when we moved to Vegas a little over a year ago. But I figured, okay, if we're gonna go Microtik, let's go Microtik. So I picked up the CR CSS 326-24G-2S plus RM. Why? Why is the big answer here? Because one, it was $160, right? For a 24 port gigabit ethernet switch, fully managed, it has one little fan in the back, so it's not fanless like, the, like these other ones are, but it's near silent, if nothing else. It also can be powered over PoE. I'll pull this up here and see if you guys can see it. You can bring PoE into port one and power the whole switch. Insane. It also has two SFP plus cages that support 1.25 gigabit or 10 gigabit. So I can uplink uh, to my, my 10 gig switches to my, I'll call them core or top of rack switches here. So we're gonna have Microtik, Microtik in each of the cabinets. And just to prove it, I've got the second one here that, uh, that I ordered uh, that we're gonna open up and get into the racks here in just a little bit because I gotta change it out real, uh, while Esther's gone. All right, so th the thing about these switches is that I think a lot of people sleep on them. I don't typically hear people talking about Microtik. They're a Latvia-based company in Eastern Europe. Um, they've been fantastic to work with as far as support and emailing. I wanna give a shout out to those. This, this video is not sponsored in any way by them, so this is my own loving fanboyism of what Microtik is doing. They're bringing enterprise capability to the home prosumer. And that's really what, it's, they've certainly got some bigger switches. There is a 48 port version of this for about $600, I believe, that has four SFP plus cages and 48 ports that all have PoE. It's an insane switch for that, that amount of money. Something that you would normally pay thousands and thousands of dollars for as a 48 port plus 10 gig switch. They even have, their, they, I believe they've released them, the 25 gig and 100 gig switches uh, that they have out there now. So don't sleep on Microtik, guys. They are amazing switches. The user interfaces are fantastic. Um, and one of the big things about it, you'll hear it called cloud router switches, right? And usually that means that it can, they have two different OSs that you can run in different modes. You can run these as routers. This one is specifically, you can only run as a switch, but they have versions of them that can do L3 switching. So if you guys are in the networking and you guys understand what that is, great. You know what I'm talking about. If you don't, um, basically you can do uh, routing on the same piece of equipment that you can do switching. So that really brings a different level of management and capabilities to your network stack when you can do that. So let's get this guy in the rack. We're going to, I've got everything labeled as far as port profiles and all of that stuff. Uh, so we're gonna pull the Netgear out and we're gonna get this first Netgear 24 port into the rack. All right, so we're back over here at the desk and uh, everything's installed. I hope you guys enjoyed that little trick of how to swap out a switch really quick, especially if you've got uh, open port profiles and not a lot of VLANs and it doesn't really matter what port things get plugged into. I've got one lag that I've got to correct to be able to get from my PC to the Synology, but that's not going to be around much longer anyway, so I didn't, I didn't really care that much about that. So just for those that are out there trying to nitpick, <laughs> I just wanted things plugged in so that we could get in here to the switch. So let's jump in and take a look. Uh, get logged in here, and I did a little bit of pre-configuration before I got on here because you got to discover what IP address is. It's like 192, 168, something out of the box. You got to set that up and make sure it blah, 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 all that stuff. Just so that we can get connected up, upgrade the switch, which I'll show you guys how to do right now. Here is the user interface. Let me, let me blow this up a little bit so you guys can actually see what's going on here. So this is the, let's go to the main link page. This is your main kind of link page of what it is. You can see here that you can enable and disable ports. You can give them tags so you can put what it is. I'll, I'm gonna come back through and do this. I haven't configured this in any way yet other than upgrading to the latest software and changing the admin password. 
literally it. That's the only thing I've done. So you can see all of the kind of default configuration here. You've got flow control you can set. You can set your duplex. Speed detects the speeds. Uh, this 100 meg one right here is my PDU. Uh, I just know that, that that's the only 100 meg thing I have on here uh, for monitoring and things like that. We're going to have more of those soon. Uh, you can see the link status, auto negotiation, put, you can port labels and all of that kind of stuff, right? Awesome. Sweet. Uh, you can also look at the two SFP plus ports that are on there and eventually we'll have 10 gig uh, RJ45 going into those. If not, twin X. Uh, we'll see what happens there. Uh, port isolation, you can certainly go through this stuff if you want to. There's not much in a home lab environment that you're probably going to be dealing with here unless you want to completely wall off um, a, a DMZ or something like that. You could probably do that. Uh, to run a, a lab environment or air-gapped environment, you could probably do that if you wanted to. Uh, here's where you actually, something that's very useful. Oh, it picked up one trunk. Look at that. Uh, can I set that to active? Yes. Let's set that to active. Uh, nope, it's going to be this one. So that's probably going to fix my issue right there. We'll apply that change. And it's going to pick up the trunk that I have going back and forth from the Sonal. That's amazing that it discovered it, by the way. It's probably picking that up off of the... I'd have to see what that partner Mac is. But yeah, I'm going to go investigate that even further. That's fantastic. Um, forwarding, you can certainly do port forwarding and things like that. Um, all of that stuff. Uh, let's see, RSTP. There's your stats. Everybody loves data. Everybody loves statistics. It's real time. You can see it updating in real time. The amount of traffic going over my network from various places. I love stuff like this, especially when I'm moving large data sets around. I can come in and track and do that sort of stuff. Uh, you get a number of errors, check CRCs, any of that kind of stuff, collisions you might want to do. Uh, historical data here. I think this archives it out every period. Yeah, 64, 65 to 127. Yeah, you so see, you get your your historical data there. VLANs. This is something we're going to be doing a lot of in the new data center environment. So we're going to be doing a lot with VLANs. I'm probably going to make a separate video about going over this in particular because we're going to have to segment host networks and storage networks and uh, management networks, out of band management type stuff. So we're going to be doing a lot with VLANs in the near future, but not yet. Not yet. Right now we're just updating core infrastructure, right? Here's a list of all your MAC addresses that are connected to all, or the max of all your ports, I should say, so that you can detect it and see it uh, how, how it works. Uh, let's see, IGMP, nobody really uses that much money anymore. SNMP, if you've got traps set up, you can certainly um, trap this as well. Uh, ACLs, uh, here's your system, right? So you can come in and you can see uh, your model number, you've got the core MAC address. This is for ETH1, uh, your port one MAC address. I only know that because I had to look that up to find the switch on the network. A little ARP uh, to find that. Reset your password, change all that, and you can see temperature going right there. That's actually kind of high. I'm surprised that it's that high. <laughs> uh, anyway, and here's your upgrade screen. Super easy. You can see that I've installed the latest one, and when there is a new one, you can scan for upgrades, and this will light up down here on the right. Let me move my camera around, actually, so you guys can see that. Sorry about that. Uh, and then you can see S Switch OS or SWOS is up to date. Download and upgrade, or you can manually upload a bin file of your choosing if you want to retro if you want to downgrade or go back to a different version. That's certainly possible as well. So that's the MicroTik switch. Uh, the larger switches that you can run both router OS and switch OS on. You can, there's a setting where you can toggle back and forth between the two. But as I said previously, this one just runs Switch OS. So there you go, guys. Uh, we've changed over the network. We have uh, changed over the switch. We're starting to get check a couple of these boxes off. A KVM arrived today. We've got to get that in the rack. We're going to go over that from APC. We've got a new PDU that's here that's going in the second cabinet. We have got, um, what else have I got coming? Oh, UPSs. So friend of the show, friend of the Discord, uh, sent me two APC 3000 XL UPSs. So the electrician's got to come in and pull a 30 amp run to each cabinet so that we can plug the UPSs in. PDUs come off of that and we are done with power. They're sitting down in the garage right now and I've got to figure out how to carry 175 pounds twice up three flights of stairs. So that's my mission right now. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Really appreciate it and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.